to the Italian Football Podcast. What I want to do now is I want us to do and pick a Inter Greatest Eleven. Now, we did one on Juventus uh, a few months ago and it was very, very popular with, with our listeners and everyone's been asking us to do one for the for the other team. So ahead of the Derby d'Italia, we thought, what better moment but to do a, an Inter Greatest Eleven of all time. So like last time, what we're going to do is um, we're going to go through uh, each department on the on the field, goalkeepers, then defenders, then midfielders, then forwards, I'm going to read out a short list and then both myself and Nima will pick our, our our players for each for each position and eventually come up with a with an ele- a greatest ever 11. So we'll start off with the with the goalkeepers. There's there's so many all-time greats to, to pick from. It's going to be so difficult to do this 11, but from the goalkeeper shortlist, I have down Walter Zenga, obviously the the legendary uh, inter goalkeeper from the the 1980s and the, the early 90s won the the Scudetto in 1989 under Trapattoni. Julio Cesar, of course, in the Nauties team, won uh, multiple Serie A titles and in that 2010 Champions League uh, winning team. Samir Handanovic, who has the 10th most appearances in the history of Inter uh, mm. and has been one of their, was one of their real um, constants, really, during, the last, during a decade of first of struggles and then going into the new winning era of Inter. Gianluca Paluca, who was a, a fantastic goalkeeper during the 90s uh, for, for Inter after Zenga. And Francesco Toldo, who was an amazing goalkeeper for, for Inter in the, the, um, the first half of the, of the noughties before Julio Cesar. And then going back a little bit, Giuliano Sarti, who was the, the goalkeeper for Inter during the Grande Inter of when they won... Um, the, the the Champions League or the European Cup as it was known then twice and got to a third uh, European Cup final as well. Um, so those are the those are the short list, uh, Nima. Who are you going for for your goal? There is company? only there is only one choice. There is only one choice, and that's Walter Zenga. He, he is not just Inter's greatest ever goalkeeper, but he's also with a shout of being. Italy, one of you know, Italy's one of you know top three ever Italian goalkeepers that have existed. He is undoubtedly number one uh, for for what he did at Inter, for the level he played at, which is kind of unrivaled, if we're perfectly honest. Um, he no, nah, he, he's from Milan. He's an Interista through and through. Played his pretty much his entire professional career at Inter. Um, no, nah, it's he. He it's it's Zenga. It's it's Zenga. I can't. You know, he, he's he's the only person who, if he were to become the coach of Inter, I would I would throw all reason out the window in the sense that I would never, no matter how bad potentially the results go, I would never call for his sacking. That is how important he is at this at Inter. Like it would, even if he, he got he lost every single game coaching Inter, I would never ever call for his sacking. I just can't do that. You just can't do that. It's Walter Zenga. He is Inter. He he embodies everything about Inter. Um, and and as a player, he was just unbelievable, unbelievable goalkeeper. He was unbelievable, yeah. He was, uh, what was his nickname, Nima? Spider Man. Spider Man. Yeah. Spider Man, yeah. He incredible was. Incredible, you know, acrobatic saves that he did. Yeah. Um, he was an amazing, amazing goalkeeper. Uh, his only weakness, I think, was on crosses. He wasn't the best on crosses and he mm. made me cry as a youngster. But for Inter, he was absolutely, uh, absolutely insane. I mean, let's think about it. Stefano Tacconi, who passed away, I think, recently. No, no, um, he's still alive. Oh, well, he's, he's sick. Sorry, he was yeah, he's sick. Got, yeah. yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah, no. But he, he, um, he, uh, when he started for that Juve that won everything in the 80s, he was their undisputed number one. He couldn't get a kick with the Italian national team. It was always Walter Zenga. That's how good Zenga was. Mm. And that was, and, and Taconi was was a goalkeeper of a Juve that literally won every single trophy available to them. He couldn't get a kick. 
it was always Walter yeah, Tengel. Yeah, used to be known as the best, the best backup goalkeeper in the world. That's <laughs> yeah, what, I that's, remember. That's what... And and he was very, he still, he was very bitter about it. He never stops bitching and moaning about it. <laughs> and him and Zenga have never, you know, had a really good relationship because of that. Mm. But yeah, that's how good Walter Zenga was. Walter Zenga was it was the undisputed number one mm. uh, between the and he's, and for, forget he set the people forget about it because of the mistake that he made but he set the, mm. the, the record for a world cup n- number of minutes mm. without conceding mm. um, for mm. italy during the, the italian 90 uh, as well uh, i believe that record still stands um, i think so yeah. i would be surprised if it's been beaten because it, it was like midway through the second half of the semi-final and he'd yeah. gone every minute up until then without, without conceding let's do the defense now uh, this is this is so so difficult. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, reading out this list, I mean, it's insane. One thing I've noticed about Inter is a lot of Inter's players stay there for a long time. Um, yeah. I've noticed that um, from through, through doing the shortlist here. So, defender shortlist, um, and I know one of these players you're picking in midfield, but I'm reading them out in the defence. So Javier Zanetti, who has the most appearances, of course, in the history of of Inter. Giuseppe Bergami, who has the second most appearances in um, the history of Inter, and was part of the team for, for, for almost 20 years. Um, Tarsicio Bugnic, who was an insane player, gave maybe mm. the most famous quote about Pele, uh, marked him during the 1970 World Cup uh, and basically said, um, I thought Pele was was made out of flesh and bone like everyone else, but I was wrong, <laughs> was basically the quote. Uh, Mike on. Uh, Mike Conn, of course, part of the, the Inter team that, that won the, the 2010 uh, treble. Uh, so those are the kind of like the more right backy options, although Bergami could also, was also really a centre back. Then the left back options, I've got uh, Facchetti, of course, who has the third most appearances of Inter. And he was the captain of the Grande Inter and, and uh, just a. Actually, he wasn't. He wasn't. There's someone else who was, and that's uh, on my... Oh, Picky, pick. yeah. But he was captain yeah. after Picky left, though. Yeah. After yeah. Picky, after yeah. Picky left, yeah. he was the captain of the of the Inter at that yeah. time. Uh, and then Bremer, Andreas Bremer, of course, was part of the, the Trapattoni team, part of the three Germans uh, at Inter. And then moving into more central, we've got uh, Giuseppe Berezi, of course, the, the, the brother, the lesser-known brother of, of Franco Berezi, but a legend in his own, uh, his own right for Inter. Uh, Ivan Cordoba, Walter Samuel, both part of the of the, that great Inter team of the Noughties. Uh, Ricardo Ferri, who was mm. a part of that amazing um, Italy defence in Italia 90 and, and also part of the Inter team that, that, that won in the, the 1989 Scudetto. That defence, though. Bergomi, Ferri, Baresi, Maldini. I mean, no, no. Zenga and Goal. Insane. <laughs> Bloody hell. Mm. <laughs> And then, of course, the man you said, Armando Picchi, who was the sweeper mm. of that of the Grande Inter, and who was the captain until uh, until he left, um, and died very prematurely, uh, but sadly, um, in at the age of in his mid thirties when he was a coach. I believe he was at Juventus, or had just been at Juventus when he died. Um, and then Milan Scrinia, Fulvio Colavati, uh, part of the nineteen eighty two mm. Italy World Cup winning team, and uh, Lucio, who was also part of that two thousand and ten team. So, I mean, the list there. Is insane. So try and make a defence, uh, a back four out of that, Nima. Yeah, Mike on to the right because the way that he dominated the right wing was just unbelievable. So he's on the right. Giacinto Facchetti is an institution at Inter to the left. And then in the middle, it has to be Bergomi and uh, and, and Picchi, Armando Picchi. And it, and it annoys me a little bit about, the, about Armando Picchi because people don't know who he was. He was... The the captain of La Grande Inter that won everything, the best ever Inter that has ever existed uh, in the in in the sixties when they won two back to back European Cups with Champions Leagues. The the um, you know he's he doesn't the way that you know he joined you know he was part of the Spal team that their highest ever finish in the Serie A. Um, he won everything. They were one game away from winning the treble. Back then, in the sixties, they lost the Coppa Italia final to Juve. He he was just he was a libero. He was a leader on and off the pitch. He embodied the values that Inter wanted to to embody in the sense of you know working hard and keep your head down and and you know we, Inter are a different club. 
than than Milan. Milan have always been kind of more extrovert into a very introvert club historically, and he was very like that, you know. Um, and he was um, he was absolutely one of the greatest players to ever play for for Italy uh, for for in, for Inter in Italy. He didn't have a very good Italy career due to injuries, very unlucky, uh, and also management choices. But we're talking about someone who in you know, in 2022, he was inducted into the Italian Football's Hall of Fame uh, because, and, and that is something that's a bit of a shame. I think it's a disgrace that, you know, because people don't know him, uh, out, you know, the average Inter fan don't even know him. Um, and every year Inter have their Hall of Fame inductee thing where people vote, he's always overlooked. Uh, but luckily, but but he's already, but he has been inducted into Italy's Hall of Fame because luckily there, people who actually know football vote and not the general public. Mm. So well, he's had the stadium, Livorno Stadium, is named yeah, after. He was. Him. He's from Livorno. He was born in Livorno, um, and he's he is an absolute titan, uh, one of the greatest defenders mm. ever to play the game. Just because of, you know he he didn't he wasn't very uh, you know. His, he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. He died, unfortunately. Um, yeah, he was 35 when he died yeah. of cancer. He was coach of Juventus, and then he had to yeah. he had to stop during the yeah. mid season because he got yeah. because of he, he, yeah. he got cancer and he died right. a few months later. And, yeah, he did, and he was uh, you know he he has to be, and again, Inter fans, this 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 shame must stop. Next time you can vote for the Inter Hall of Fame, you have to vote for Armando Picchi. It's as simple as that. You just have to. Um, uh, you know, it, just you know, do your reading and research the club that yeah, you support. Great, great player. One of the first. But Bergomi, but of course, the next time it has to be Lozio. Like you just have to have Bergomi there. It's it's just you know he he was you know, I know he was a right back, but back then most of his career, but he was outstanding in the middle as well. Yeah, no, he played right back and and at centre back, played in both both roles. Has, is also the young, I mean, well, I think he was seventeen or eighteen when he won the World Cup. Eighteen, yeah, yeah, and sported a moustache that would make a forty-year-old man put. To no, shame. he looked about thirty at that World yeah. Cup. He, with that, with that moustache, or even older. <laughs> he was only eighteen. Mm. And the funny thing with Bergomi is, it's so funny to me that he looks. Healthy. He looks now. younger now than he did then. Then he stopped yeah. playing yeah. when he did when it's he was true. playing. Like, true, he, he looks, shaved he off the moustache after he stopped not playing. Just that, he looks healthier and happier. Mm. <laughs> as if, like, no, it's true because he, he always come across <laughs> as quite scary as a, yeah. as a footballer. You thought of him, oh, he's not going to be a very nice person. And then and then, and then afterwards man. he's very, very gentle person and very, very really the loveliest man yeah. you could ever. Yeah, he was a I mean he, his his the longevity of, of Bergami's career was insane. I mean he was, yeah, he was 18 years old. Uh, uh, he man-marked Carlines Rimenica, who was mm-hmm. who was the reigning Ballon d'Or winner, I believe, at the time yeah. of the 1982 World Cup and the best yeah. best striker in the world going into that mm-hmm. World Cup. And he man-marked him uh, out of the final, in, in the final uh, mm-hmm. against uh, West Germany when Italy won 3-1, uh, 18 years old. And then he, he was still, he, he came back from and played in the 1998 World Cup for, for Italy, came out of uh, seven years in, in exile uh, and came back. Cesare Maldini brought him back, and he had an outstanding World Cup in in uh, 1998. And they, when Italy lost in the quarterfinals on penalties to to, the, to France, the hosts, eventual winners, he was brilliant in that World Cup uh, as well. So he's uh, the longevity of his career was 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 absolutely insane. Mm. And no, it was, and, and he he was. He, Who's your left back then? Facchetti, the first, you know, Giacinto Facchetti, the first real wing back of that era attacking wing back of that system so Maicon Bergomi Picchi Facchetti mm. Zenga in goal <laughs> yeah my my, my defence slightly different to yours um, I'm I'm going to go with with Burgnich at, at right yeah. back um, mm. he was part of obviously Herrera's yeah. land inter team which, which dominated you know Italy and Europe in the 60s um, he was an amazing Amazing defender. He was, you know, very aggressive, no nonsense, kind of hard man, kind of defender. Part of kind of you know the the, the, kind of the Catenaccio system that that, mm. that Inter um, used to used to play, and he was and he was uh, also a legend for for, for Italy as well. Um, he 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 at the time I think he was one of one of the highest for a long time. He was one of the highest 
even though he played 68 times for Italy, which might not sound a lot now, but back then that was a lot. And he was one of the highest appearance makers for, for Italy. And he played at three World Cups and he won the Euros in, in 1968. So I would have him at right back. Bergami has to be in my team as well, of course. Um, and then uh, I would have... Um, I'm going to put Zanetti at left back. I know he didn't necessarily play that much there, although he did when he they won in 2010. <laughs> he could play there every game. I mean, he could play anywhere, anywhere. Zanetti. <laughs> he could play <laughs> anywhere on the pitch, as Paul Lynch said when he came on, and he could play him anywhere uh, other than goal. <laughs> and um, so I'm putting him at left back. I mean, he, he did play there during the when they won in yeah, 2010, he did. didn't he? And he did a great job against Messi in the semi final. Messi didn't get a kick in, he was 37. <laughs> uh, and then, I mean, Fekete, his natural role wasn't as a centre back. He did play at centre back as he got into his into his thirties, into his mid thirties. He played at centre back, but I mean, it's not his role. He's a left back. But um, but yeah, I'm going to stick Fekete in there because you know yeah. I can't leave Fekete out, no, and I can't leave Zanetti out, and I, I can't no. leave Bugnic out. I mean, it's just impossible to pick a <laughs> pick a defence out of these. So no, yeah, so those are my back four. Midfield. Yeah. Let's do the midfield mm. then. Um, we, we, we're going with a four-three-three formation because it's just easier. Yeah. Um, so the, the midfield shortlist: Lothar Matthäus, of course, Germany legend, Ballon d'Or winner, 1990 World Cup uh, winning legend, and Esteban Cambiasso, four, over 400 appearances for Inter in that naughty team, that, and also won the, of course, the treble. Mario Corso, uh, who's mm. sixth on the all-time list. Um, I know you're going to pick him up in attack, but I put, I'm putting him with the midfielders. He was a wide, wide, more of a wide midfielder, yeah. um, of course. So, and Gabriele Oriali, who was yeah. a was a defensive midfielder, hard man midfielder. Uh, Marcello Brozovic, of course, who left last summer. Luis Suarez, who won yeah. the Ballon d'Or in the 60s, 60, for, at yeah. Barcelona, an amazing, amazing player in that grande, grande Inter team. Uh, Nicola Barella, I'm putting in. And uh, Angelo Dominguini, who's also a Cagliari legend um, as well. Mm. My midfield three is Javier Zanetti on the right of a midfield three, uh, Cucho Cambiasso as the holding midfielder, and Lothar. Because <laughs> Lothar, look, he if you rival Maradona when Maradona is at his best, then that tells me everything I need to know about the player. I remember watching him the way that he ate midfield. Uh, as they say in Italy, the way that he ate his opponents and dominated midfield from just from the, his passing, his shooting, his running, his he, he could do everything. He literally could. He was a fantastic tackler. He was a brilliant ball winner, cr- creative genius, fantastic shot. He was he was the most complete midfielder, one of the most complete midfielders I've ever seen. Um, and he was, you know, Ballon d'Or winner, uh, and and he's also Lothar. He's large. He has a larger than life uh, personality. Mm. I, I, a friend of mine who's a commentator in Sweden, he he's, he told me of a very funny story where they, I think I can't remember what, what tournament was, the World Cup or uh, Euros or whatever it was, but he was commentating and it was Swedish TV, and he was commentating live and. And uh, Lothar doesn't ask. Lothar does. Um, so Lothar just looks at him and takes his charger away from him and starts using it and gives him a nod. <laughs> like that's just who Lothar is. He doesn't even ask. He just takes the charger, looks him in the eye, and nods as if you've been graced by Lothar. So that Lothar touches your belongings. Um, like he he really is that kind of a larger than life character. And on the pitch, he was unbelievable. On the pitch, absolutely unbelievable. Like you said, the complete midfielder. I mean, box to box, he could tackle, he could create, he could everything, he could everything. shoot. I mean, his long range shooting was was insane. He, could, he took penalties, he took free kicks. I mean, he was tactically brilliant. I mean, he even played a sweeper as he got older in his career for 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 Germany. His longevity was insane. I mean, he played at Euro nineteen eighty and then played at Euro two thousand. As well, played like he's, he's played in twenty years for for Germany national team. Um, you know, played until he was forty. I mean, he was yeah. I mean, just 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 incredible. If I had to pick my greatest ever eleven, uh, and I had to pick a box to box midfielder, I think I'd pick Lothar Matthäus. I don't think I would pick for, for my box to box midfielder. I don't think I would pick anybody else other than other than him. I won over one hundred and fifty caps for the Germany national team. I mean, you know. Uh, Nice. Insane. He won one. Insane. He was just Back when tournaments were shorter then as well. Like you didn't get yeah. to play as many games because mm. because the the, the the qualification campaigns were shorter. The 
the, the, the tournaments themselves were short and he got over 150 caps uh, or won 150 caps in total. I mean, it's insane. Mm. Um, okay, Mateus is one. Who you got? Who else you got? Cucho Cambiaso and Javier Zanetti. Javier Zanetti to the right and then Cucho Cambiaso as the holding midfielder who is one of, as as I think Mourinho said, playing with Cambiaso is like playing with a coach on the pitch. Mm. He, you know, he, he was the one of the most intelligent footballers that I've ever seen. Um, he was like the he he was he was the point at which other players looked at to understand where they should be in relation uh, to to their position yeah. on the pitch. Tactically, he was brilliant. He was brilliant at creating a unit in midfield, but also like protecting the defense as well. Like we talk about, like we talked about this season a lot about Milan and how they just don't have anyone able to protect the defense. Respect when Benacer, who's not too dissimilar actually, Benacer to, mm-hmm. to Cambiasso, doesn't mm-hmm. play. Um, you know, he was just brilliant. Brilliant at that, absolutely fantastic. He was he was a general. He's probably my favorite. He is my favorite player of the treble team because of his intelligence, because of how cool and calm and controlled and the leader he was. Um, him and Zanetti, you know, Zanetti was the general. This was his lieutenant. Yeah, you know what I mean. A great like short his... passing game as well. And, oh yeah, and he terrible hairstyle very... when he used to try and hang on to that last thread of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Before he could yeah, we're, we're all very grateful when he shaved his hair off. Um, we're all very happy for that. No, but look, and 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 just uh, scored very many important goals. Uh, in you know Chelsea in the Champions League comes to mind, mm. and Barcelona, um, of course, the semis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was they scored against Barcelona? Didn't no, he? did he score against Barcelona? Didn't. No, no, he didn't. He scored against uh, uh, the, the 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 goals at the um, at the San Siro were scored by Schneider, Milito, and Maicon. Um, That's Barcelona. right. Yeah, I'm getting mixed up with the Schneider goal. Mm. No, yeah. Well, they're both bold. Or Schneider <laughs> had a bit of more hair. But um, yeah, no, well, Cambiasso Cambias 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 kept, Cambias kept his figure a little bit better than Schneider has. <laughs> one could say that, and one would, one could also say that was very, very t- t- to be expected because uh, Schneider liked the good life, even when we should he... probably have Schneider on this short list as well, even though he had a short, yeah, absolutely, short and absolutely. sweet, short and sweet career. But yeah. uh, no, no, that, what? that one year, the nine oh nine oh oh nine ten season, he was one of the best. He was the best midfielder in the world, if you ask me. That's yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Unplayable. I'm going to tell you mine. Mine, mine. I'm going for Mateus and Cambiasso as well. Mm. Um, but I'm going to pick uh, Luis Suarez uh, on here. Yeah, I think Suarez just has to be in this yeah, team. He was the the man that made that grande inter tick. He was the the mm. the, 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 the the man that the, everything went through him in that grande inter team. And that grande inter team is one of the greatest teams of all time. And uh, he was at Inter for nearly a decade, nine years, 1961 to 1970. He won the Ballon d'Or. He joined Inter for a world record fee, so that that tells you about where his state, what his status was in the world of football. He won uh, three Scudetti, two European Cups, two Intercontinental Cups at a time when the Intercontinental Cup was a big tournament. Um, and sorry, he won the Ballon d'Or twice. I should say sorry, yeah. he, he, once with Inter, but once also before. Uh, and he won the nineteen sixty four Euros with 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 with, uh, with Spain um, uh, as well. Um, he was just an amazing, amazing. Uh, midfielder, yeah, yeah. No, you, I mean it's difficult because there's so many. I mean, I would, I, you know, there's so many midfielders and world class players that you could have in there. Yeah. Uh, for when you when you when you talk about Milan, Inter, and Juve all time elevens, it's just yeah. How do you pick up eleven? I mean, mm. it's, it's the level is just so ridiculous. It's so damn high. It's impossible, really. It is. It really is. I mean, it's, <laughs> it was so difficult picking an eleven out of this. Um, the attack now, right? So, this shortlist is really long. Now, some of these players had longer <laughs> into careers than others. Now, some of these players don't get in because their inter careers are so short, even though they were amazing in the short time they were there. And, you, and that will become clear as I read out the list. So, Giuseppe Miazza, top scorer of Inter, all-time top scorer. Uh, not not Mauro Icardi. He isn't the Inter top scorer, as uh, we were told by... Um, <laughs> Is it CBS? The other, no, TNT. No, the other TNT. Day. It's neither Riccardi or Lautaro Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, it was Lautaro, they said, was the top scorer. Yeah, joint top Lautaro, scorer. A joint top scorer. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so it's actually Giuseppe Miazza, top scorer, yes, and, and has is. been top scorer for like over 80 years. Mm. And he has, and of will course, be the stadium. forever and ever until the end of time. Yeah. I mean, I just don't see anyone staying at Inter long enough to beat his record in this yeah. day and age. Yeah, I mean, he has the stadium named after him as well, of course. Mm. Sandro Mazzola, who's the fourth top scorer of Inter, and he's kind of like one of those more attacking midfielders, stri- strike forward. So, I mean, he could even be in the midfield 
uh, section mm. as well. Um, Alessandro Altobelli, who's the second top scorer of Inter mm. all time, uh, in the Inter team of the of the 1980s, and um, of course part of the Italy team that won the 1982 World Cup and scored in the final for, for mm. Italy against West Germany. Uh, Roberto Bobo Boninsegna, the original Bobo, mm. uh, and he um, he 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 was the third top scorer of uh, of Inter of all time. He was there in the seventies and was part of the Italy team that got to the 1970 World Cup final and scored in the 1970 mm. World Cup final in that in that four one thrashing by by Brazil. Christian Vieri, who had quite a short and sweet. Into career, but still, he's scored, still scored so many carry. goals. He's the tenth top scorer yeah. of uh, of all time uh, for Inter. Lautaro Martinez, who hasn't you been at Inter that long, but is already the seventh top scorer of Inter. Mm-hmm. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, again, mm-hmm. what a short, short uh, spell at Inter. Only three years, but but you know, was 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 magical. Was magical there, one Inter three Scudetti on his own. Yeah, essentially. I mean, it's just yeah, yeah. Of course, the Ronaldo, the original Brazilian mm. Ronaldo. R9. 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 Absolutely insane. But really only had one and a half years yeah. <laughs> for Inter yeah. because then he was just always injured. Um, but that first season was magical, 97-98. Uh, then going back a little bit, Lennart Skogland, one of your mm. one of Sweden's greats, a Swedish winger. Istvan Nyers as well, it's who's cool. also in the top one of the top scorers of all time. Diego Milito who is another player that when you talk about Piki, who's just, just ignored when we're talking about, mm. like, I mean, his, I, I say this, his 2009, 2010 season is one of the all time greatest seasons by a striker of anywhere. Yeah. When, if you look at not just the number of goals, I think he scored 30 goals, but just like yeah. how decisive he was. He, he scored the winner that won the, the, the last day of the Scudetto uh, that won them into the title. He scored the winner in the Coppa Italia final. He scored the 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 both the goals to win the the Champions League final, but he also scored in the semi final, the quarter final. Uh, he he scored in all the, the all the key matches. He scored in basically that season. Uh, I mean, insane. Uh, Adriano, of course, for Inter, who had a could have done so much more, but still did pretty great. And uh, before you know things went wrong for him. Romelu Lukaku, I mean, some Inter fans will get angry with his name being on there, but he still played a pivotal role in those first two seasons. Uh, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, amazing in the in the, in the the 1980s. Uh, Ruben Sosa, again, short and sweet, but scored a lot of goals. And of course, Alvaro Ricoba, who's more of a romantic option, but yeah, it was, is. was, it's was, a romantic was still, option. still an amazing player. Um, so, yeah. Pick three from there, Nima. Yeah, so um, the number nine, like the the the, the central position, is Miazza. You you can't just. I know he played football in a different era, but you just can't go past him. You just can't. You know what he did and the impact he had and the records he set and all that stuff. He he has to be there. It's just he's he's the number nine. And then I've got with uh, Sandro Mazzola on the right because you know he he his importance for Inter and. And what he did, um, and the one man club that he was, and, and everything he did, look, he, he has to be in this team. And on the left, left, uh, left winger, I've got God's left foot, as he was nicknamed, Mario Corso, who is one of the most charismatic people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting in football. Oh, you met him? Hilarious. Oh, yeah, twice, no, three times. He's, he's passed away now, hasn't he? Yeah, yes, he's yeah. passed away. One of the most charismatic, funny, there was no bullshit with him. There was he did never. He literally said what he thought and thought what he said. Believed everything he said, and he did not was not shy in saying what he thought. There was no BS with him. And there's this story of this has become legendary now that every summer Helenio Herrera would be furious with Mario Corso and wanted to sell him. And every summer, Angelo Moratti had to mend the peace and broker the peace between Helio Herrera and Mario Corso <laughs> until it really got to the point where Herrera said, you know, either him or me. <laughs> like, it just, they, they, he could not deal with him. But again, nicknamed God's left foot says everything you really need to know. He was unbelievable. He was absolutely uh, insane. Uh, of course, I've got the same um, the same attack as you, 
Matsola, mm. Miazza, and Corsa. I mean, I don't usually like picking players that I've not seen. And, and Miazza, yeah. the footage I've seen of him is so limited because I mean, it's just like little seconds highlights of him because he played in the 1930s. So it's difficult. But you know, I wouldn't usually pick him. But how can you not pick him when you, when he's when he's the top scorer, for, been the top scorer for 80 years, and he's yeah. renowned by and like anybody that like all the anybody that watched him play, including like journalists that were still around, like in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, say that he's the greatest. You know. That, 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 that Italy had. I mean, you kind of have to pick him, um, mm. Miazza. So, so, so he gets in, and then Mazzola, of course. You know, the son of the great Torino great Valentino Mazzola, who was yeah. who was killed in the the, the so, Superga yeah. air disaster in in, in 1949, and you know proved to be just as much of a legend as his father. And, and you know, he he. He uh, he was at Inter for 16 years, and you know he won everything. Um, he was, uh, I mean, he was really a midfielder, an uh, attacking midfielder, but he did play up front as well. And he, I mean, he was uh, just amazing technically. Scored goals, made goals, physically. You know, he was strong. He he, he had everything, Matsola, and he had also had a, a very famous kind of rivalry with with Gianni Rivera during that time yeah. for Italy. Um, you know who to play. Mazzola generally won that battle because Rivera didn't have a very good career for for the Italy mm. national team. Mazzola was always the one that kind of he generally got the nod. But during the 1970 World Cup, they came they came up uh, with this uh, this um, they called it like a relay uh, system where mm. one I mean it's ridiculous when you think back at it now they actually did this but one would play one half and the other would play the other half <laughs> to try and keep them happy. I mean, it's absolutely insane that they actually did that. It's the most that. Italian thing ever. I, I love it. It's the most Italian yeah. football thing ever. And oh, I love yeah. it. But then in the final <laughs> against Brazil, Matsola was, was playing so well and he was the only Italy player that was playing well that they actually ended up keeping Matsola on and they didn't bring Rivera on until the final few minutes. And it was kind of seen as an insult that they yeah. brought on Rivera for just a few minutes. <laughs> I love Italian football, uh, man. At the end. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I love it. I love Italian football yeah. on her. But then, it's, yeah, it's like Miazza, very... like I said, I've got a quote here that I found from Vittorio Pozzo, who was Italy's World mm. Cup winning coach from 1934 and 1938. He said, to have Miazza in your team meant to start 1-0 up. And there are so many legendary stories you said about Corso, but there's so many legendary stories about Miazza. And um, the most famous, of course, was the 1938 World Cup semi-final against Brazil where his his uh, his shorts were falling down as he was taking the, the penalty and he uh, he had to hold them up as he was taking as he was taking the penalty he was holding his shorts while he was taking and there is actually footage of that uh, actually so that isn't like some kind of uh, you know like myth that's that, that, that's been made up and of course um he slept at a brothel the night before before a match, which is also another famous story. And Omar Momani, who who who's a good friend of the show and does our our, our, our images, uh, he did a me and him did a did like a uh, and he's actually resurrecting it now because we only got halfway through it. Like a history of the Italy national te- national team, which is done which he's done in kind of like a tune video version. And his uh, he did a great one of that on the 1938 World Cup where he actually. Shows Miazza, draws Miazza kind of like at the brothel before the game, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, of course, had the stadium named after him. And then Corso, yeah, some great stories of Corso as well. But uh, he, as you said, um, amazing left foot, one of the greatest left foots ever, one of the greatest free kick takers, free kick takers that the Italy uh, uh, or Italian football um, has, has ever had. His most famous came in against Liverpool in the in the 1965 European Cup semi-final, which is like one of the great comebacks. Inter lost the first game 2-0 at Anfield and they won 3-0 three, three in the second leg um, to, to go to the final and, and then they won. And um, it's, it's, it's said that um, the whole stadium used to go quiet when he received the ball because they always expected something something amazing. And his Inter teammate, uh, Carlo, Tan- his, Carlo Tanyin, said... Of Corso, if Corso was on form, we always won. Um, so that that kind of shows what a great. And I, and I just also want to say about Corso, um, it was really criminal how misused he was by the Italy national team. He only mm. won twenty three caps uh, in his career in a ten year Italy career, scored four goals. He never played in an international tournament, which is absolutely insane. He was excluded from 
1962 World Cup, the 66 World Cup, the 70 World Cup, the Euro 68 team. He, um, he, he, he didn't go to either. I mean, it was just absolutely criminal. And apparently it was mainly because he was seen as, as quite lazy um, on, on the pitch and they didn't think he, he fit into the team. Um, so, yeah, just criminal, that player of that talent played played so played so little for, for, for the Italy. Yeah, no, he, um, he he. it is true. It's it's him and uh, Piki who never really, you know, Piki was unlucky more injuries and also the manager didn't, you know, believe in him. But no, it's true. It's 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 weird how that happens in Italy a lot with, with great players that they don't, they don't national. It, it, Italy's, Italy's one of those countries who've, because they've been so spoilt for choice, they've almost given themselves the luxury of not allowing some of the greatest ever players to have a great Italy careers. Mm. Uh, how the mighty have fallen, eh? <laughs> yeah. He was also the originator of the knuckleball free kick, which people, mm. and it really used to irritate me when they used to say that Ronaldo invented it. Remember, yeah. oh, Ronaldo invented the knuckleball. Mm. No, no, it's Mario Corso, yeah. like 50 years yeah. before him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with, 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 with balls that were like, like weighed like, like they were made of concrete, basically. They were that hard. You know, and but, still used yeah, to get no. the knuckleball bend and effect on it and dip on it. I mean, he was is he was, quite a char- and quite a character too. Yeah. Like he he was <laughs> he's just funny, just the way very charismatic, very warm, very funny, very honest, mm. never held back, and hilarious person. I, yeah, <laughs> I remember absolutely. 